from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, bringing you data-driven insights from the Cube and ETR. This is Breaking Analysis with Dave Vellante. Chief Information Security Officers cite trust as the number one value attribute they can deliver to their organizations. And when it comes to security, identity is the new attack surface. As such, identity and access management continue to be the top priority among technology decision makers. It also happens to be one of the most challenging and complicated areas of the cybersecurity landscape. Okta, a leader in the identity space, has announced its intent to converge privilege access and identity governance in an effort to simplify the landscape and reimagine identity. Our research shows that interest in this type of consolidation is very high, but organizations believe technical debt, compatibility issues, expense, and lack of talent are barriers to reaching cyber nirvana with their evolving zero trust networks. Hello and welcome to this week's Wikibon Cube Insights, powered by ETR. In this breaking analysis, we'll explore the complex and evolving world of identity access and privileged account management with an assessment of Okta's market expansion aspirations and fresh data from ETR and input from my colleague, Eric Bradley. Let's start by exploring identity and why it's fundamental to digital transformations. Look, the pandemic accelerated digital and digital raises the stakes in cybersecurity. We've covered this extensively, but today we're going to drill into identity, which is one of the hardest nuts to crack in security. If hackers can steal someone's identity, they can penetrate networks. If that someone has privileged access to databases, financial information, HR systems, transaction systems, the backup corpus, well, you get the point. There are many bespoke tools to support a comprehensive identity access management and privilege access system. Single sign-on, identity aggregation, deduplication of identities, identity creation, the governance of those identities, group management. Many of these tools are open source. So you, ha you have lots of vendors, lots of different systems, and often many dashboards. Practitioners tell us that it's the paper cuts that kill them, patches that aren't applied, open ports, orphan profiles that aren't disabled. They'd love to have a single dashboard, but it's often not practical for large organizations because of the bespoke nature of the tooling and the skills required to manage them. Now adding to this complexity, many organizations have different identity systems for privileged accounts, the general employee population and customer identity. For example, around 50% of ETR respondents in a recent survey use different systems for workforce identity and consumer identity. Now this is often done because the consumer identity is a totally different journey. The consumer is out in the wild and takes an unknown non-linear path and then enters the known space inside a brand's domain. The employee identity journey is known throughout. You go onboarding to increasing responsibilities and more access to offboarding. Privileged access may even have different attributes, does usually like no email and or no shared credentials. And we haven't even touched on the other identity consumers in the ecosystem, like selling partners, suppliers, machines, et cetera. Like I said, it's complicated. And meeting the needs of auditors is stressful and expensive for CISOs. Open chest wounds, such as sloppy histories of privileged access approvals, obvious role conflicts, missing data, inconsistent application of policy, and the list goes on. The expense of securing digital operations goes well beyond the software and hardware acquisition costs. So there's a real need and often desire to converge these systems, but technical debt makes it difficult. Companies have spent a lot of time, effort, and money on their identity systems, and they can't just rip and replace. So they often build by integrating piece parts or they add on to their quasi-integrated monolithic systems. And then there's the whole zero trust concept. It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but folks are asking, if I have zero trust, does it eliminate the need for identity? And what does that mean for my architecture going forward? So let's take a snapshot of some of the key players in identity and PAM, privilege access management. This is an XY graph that we always like to show. It shows the net score or spending velocity 
spending momentum on the vertical axis and market share or presence in the ETR data set on the horizontal axis. It's not like revenue market share. It's just, it's, it's mentioned market share, if you will. So it's really presence in the data set. Now note the chart insert, the table, which shows the actual data for net score and shared end, which informs the position of the dot. The red dotted line there, it indicates an elevated level. Anything over 40%, that mark, we consider the strongest spending velocity. Now within this subset of vendors that we've chosen, where we've tried to identify some, most of them are pure plays in, in this identity space, you can see there are six above that 40% mark, including Zscaler, which tops the charts, Okta, which has been at or near the top for several quarters. There's an argument, by the way, to be made that Okta and Zscaler are on a collision course as Okta ex expands its TAM, but let's just park that thought for a moment. You can see Microsoft with a highly elevated spending score and a massive presence on the horizontal axis, CyberArk and SailPoint, which Okta is now aiming to disrupt, and Auth0, which Okta officially acquired in May of this year. More on that later. Now below that 40% mark, you can see Cisco, which has largely acquired companies in order to build its security portfolio. For example, Duo, which focuses on access and multi-factor authentication. Now, word of caution, Cisco and Microsoft in particular are overstated because this includes their entire portfolio of security prod products, whereas the others are more closely aligned as pure plays in identity and privileged access. Dichotic Centrify is pretty close to that 40% mark and came about as a result of the two companies emerging in April of this year. More evidence of consolidation in this space. Beyond Trust is close to the red line as well, which is really interesting because this is a company whose roots <laughs> go back to the Vax VMS days, which many of you don't even know what a Vax VMS is. <laughs> in the mid 1980s, it was the, the mini computer standard. And the company has evolved to provide more modern PAM solutions. Ping Identity is also notable in that it essentially had emerged after the dot-com bust in the early 2000s as an identity solution provider for single sign-on, SSO, and, and multi-factor authentication, MFA solutions. It IPO'd in the second half of 2019, just prior to the pandemic. It's got a $2 billion market cap down from its highs of around $3 billion earlier this year and last summer. And like many of the remote work stocks, they bounced around as the reopening trade and lofty valuations have weighed on many of these names, including Okta and SailPoint. Although CyberArk actually acted well after its, after its August 12th earnings call as its revenue growth about doubled year on year. So hot space and a big theme this year is around Okta's acquisition of Auth0 and its announcement at Octane 2021 where it entered the PAM market and announced its thrust to converge its platform around PAM and identity governance and administration. Now I spoke earlier this week with Dia Jolly, who's the chief product officer at Okta, and I'll share some of her thoughts later in this segment. But first, let's look at some of the ETR data from a recent drill down study uh, that our friends over there conducted. This data is from a, a drill down that was conducted uh, early this summer, asking organizations how important it is to have a single dashboard for access management, identity governance, and privilege access. This goes directly to Okta's strategy that it announced this year at its Octane user conference. Basically 80% of the respondents want this. So this is no surprise. Now let's stay on this theme of convergence. ETR asked security pros if they thought convergence between access management and identity governance would occur within the next three years. And as you can see, 89% believe this is going to happen. They either strongly degree, agree or somewhat agree. I mean, it's almost as though the CISOs are willing this to occur. And this seemingly bodes well for Okta, which in April announced its intent to converge PAM and IGA. Okta's Dia Jolly stressed to me that this move was in response to customer demand. And this chart confirms that. But there's a deeper analysis worth exploring. Traditional tools of identity, single sign-on, SSO, and multi-factor authentication, MFA, they're being commoditized. And the most obvious example of this is OAuth or open authorization. You know, log in with Twitter, Google, LinkedIn, Amazon, Facebook. Now Okta currently has around a $35 billion market cap as of today, off from its highs, which were well over 40 billion earlier this year. Okta's stated, previously stated total addressable market was around 55 billion. So CEO Todd McKinnon 
had to initiate a TAM expansion play, which is the job of any CEO, right? Now this move does that. It increases the company's TAM by probably around 20 to $30 billion in our view. Moreover, the number one criticism of Okta is your price is too high. That's a good problem to have, I say. <laughs> Regardless, Okta has to think about adding more value to its customers and prospects. And this move both expands its TAM and supports its longer term vision to enable a secure user controlled ubiquitous digital identity. Supporting federated users and data within a centralized system. Now, the other thing Jolly stressed to me is that Okta is heavily focused on the user experience, making it simple and consumer grade easy. At Octane uh, 21, she gave a keynote laying out the company's vision. It was a compelling presentation designed to show how complex the problem is and how Okta plans to simplify the experience for end users, service providers, brands, and the overall technical community across the ecosystem. But look, there are a lot of challenges the company faces to pull this off. So let's dig into that a little bit. Zero trust has been the buzzword and it's a direction the industry is moving towards, although there are skeptics. Zero trust today is aspirational. It essentially says you don't trust any user or device and the system can ensure the right people or machines have the proper level of access to the resources they need all the time with a fantastic user experience. So you can see why I call this Nirvana earlier. In, in previous breaking analysis segments, we've laid out a map for protecting your digital identity, your passwords, your crypto wallets, how to create air gaps. It's a bloody mess. So ETR asked security pros if they thought a hybrid of access management and zero trust network could replace their PAM systems. Because if you can achieve zero trust in a world with no shared credentials and real time access, a direction which Dia Jolly clearly told me Okta is headed, then in theory, you can eliminate the need for privileged access management. Another way of looking at this is you do for every user what you do for PAM users, and that's how you achieve zero trust. But you can see from this picture that there's more uncertainty here with nearly 50% of the sample not in agreement that this is achievable. Practitioners in Eric Bradley's roundtables tell us that you'll still need the PAM system to do things like session auditing and credential checking, uh, checkouts and, and other things, but, but much of the PAM functionality could be handled by this zero trust environment, we believe. ETR then asked the security pros how difficult it would be to replace their PAM systems. And this is where it gets interesting. You can see by this picture, the enthusiasm wanes quite a bit when the practitioners have to think about the challenges associated with replacing privileged access management systems with a new hybrid. Only 20% of the respondents see this as something that is easy to do, likely because they are smaller and don't have a ton of technical debt. So the question then, obvious question is why? What are the difficulties and challenges of replacing these systems? Here's a diagram that shows the blockers. 53% say gaps in capabilities, 26% say there's no clear ROI, i.e. too expensive, and 11% interestingly said they want to stay with best of breed solutions, presumably handling much of the integration of the bespoke capabilities on their own. Now, speaking with our Eric Bradley, he shared that there's concern about rip and replace and the ability to justify that internally. There's also a significant buildup in technical debt, as we talked about earlier. One CISO on an Eric Bradley ETR Insights panel explained that the big challenge Okta will face here is the inertia of entrenched systems from the likes of SailPoint, Dicotic, and others. Specifically, these companies have more mature stacks and have built in connectors to legacy systems over many years. And processes are wired to these systems and would be very difficult to change with skill sets aligned as well. One practitioner told us that he went with SalesPoint almost exclusively because of their ability to interface with SAP. Further, he said that he believed Okta would be, well, Okta would be great at connecting to other cloud API enabled systems there's a large market of legacy systems for which Okta would have to build custom integrations and that would be expensive and require a lot of engineering. Another practitioner said, we're not implementing Okta, but we strongly considered it. The reason they didn't go with Okta was the company had 
a lot of on-prem legacy apps. And so they went with Microsoft Identity Manager, but that didn't meet the grade because the user experience was subpar. So they, they're still searching for a solution that can be good at both cloud and on-prem. Now a third CISO said, quote, I've spent a lot of money writing custom connectors to SalesPoint. And he stressed a lot of money. He said that several times. So who is going to write those custom connectors for me? Will Okta do it for free? I just don't see that happening, end quote. Further, this individual said, quote, it's just not going to be an easy switch. And to be clear, SailPoint is not our PAM solution. That's why we're looking at CyberArk. So the complexity, that unquote, so the complexity and fragmentation continues. And personally, I see this as a positive trend for Okta if it can converge these capabilities. Now I pressed Okta's Diajali on these challenges and the difficulties of replacing the more mature stacks of the competitors. She fully admitted this was a real issue, but her answer was that Okta is betting on the future of microservices and cloud disruption. Her premise is that Okta's platform is better suited for this new application environment and they're essentially betting on organizations modernizing their application portfolios. And Okta believes that it will be ultimately a tailwind for the company. Now, let's look at the age old question of best of breed versus incumbent slash integrated suite. ETR and its drill down study asked customers, when thinking about identity and access management solutions, do you prefer best of breed and incumbent that you're already using or the most cost efficient solution. The respondents were asked to force rank one, two, and three. And you can see incumbent just edged out best in breed with a 2.2 score versus a 2.1 with the most cost effective choice at 1.7. Now overall, I would say this is good news for Okta. Yes, they face the issues that we brought up earlier, but as digital transformations lead to modernizing much of the application portfolio with containers and microservices, Okta will be in a position, assuming it continues to innovate, to pick up much of this business. And to the point earlier, where the CISO told us they're going to, going to use both SailPoint and CyberArk, when ETR asked practitioners which vendors are in the best position to benefit from zero trust, the, the, the zero trust trend, the answers were not surprisingly all over the place. Lots of Okta came up, Zscaler came up a lot too. Hmm, here's that collision course but plenty of SailPoint, Palo Alto, Microsoft, Netscope, Dicotic, Centrify, Cisco, all over the map. So now let's look specifically at how practitioners are thinking about Okta's latest announcements. This chart shows the results of, of the question, are you planning to evaluate Okta's recently announced identity governance and PAM offerings? 45 to nearly 50% of the respondents either were already using or plan to evaluate, with just around 40% saying they had no plans to evaluate. So again, this is positive news for Okta in our view. It's a huge portion of the market is going to take a look at what Okta is doing. Combined with the underlying trends that we shared earlier rel related to the need for convergence, this is goodness for the company. Now, even if the blockers are too severe to overcome, Okta will be on the radar and is on the radar, as you can see from this data, and as with the, the, the Microsoft MIM example, the company will be seen as increasing, increasingly strategic, Okta that is, and could get another bite at the Apple. Moreover, Okta's acquisition of Auth0 is strategically important. One of the other things Jolly told me is they see initiatives starting both from devs and then hand it over to IT to implement, and then the reverse, where, the, where IT may be the starting point and then go to devs to productize the effort. The Auth0 acquisition gives Okta plays in both games because as we've reported earlier, Okta wasn't strong with the devs. Auth0, that was their wheelhouse. Now Okta has both. Now on the one hand, when you talk to practitioners, they're excited about the joint capabilities and the gaps that Auth0 fills. On the other hand, it takes out one of Okta's main competitors and customers like competition. So I guess I look at it this way. Many enterprises will spend more money to save time. And that's where Okta has traditionally been strong. Premium pricing, but there's clear value in that it's easier. Less resources required, skill sets are, are, are scarce, so boom, 
good fit. Other enterprises look at the price tag of an Okta and they have, they actually have inter internal development capabilities. So they prefer to spend engineering time to save money. That's where Auth0 has seen its momentum. Now Todd McKinnon and company, they can have it both ways because of that acquisition. If the price of Okta Classic is too high, here's a lower cost solution with Auth0 that can save you money if you have the developer talent and the time. It's a compelling advantage that's unique. Okay, let's wrap. The road to zero trust networks is long and arduous. The goal is to understand, support, and enable access for different roles safely and securely across an ecosystem of consumers, employees, partners, suppliers, all the consumers <laughs> of your, of your and, and touch points to your security system. You've got to simplify the user experience. Today's kludge of password, password management, security exposures, just not going to cut it in the digital future. Supporting users in a decentralized, no moat world, the queen has left her castle, as I often say, is compulsory, but you must have federated governance. And there are always going to be room for specialists in this space, especially for industry specific solutions, for instance, within healthcare, education, government, et cetera. Hybrids are the reality for companies that have any on-prem legacy apps. Now Okta has put itself in a leadership position, but it's not alone. Complexity and fragmentation will likely remain. This is a highly competitive market with lots of barriers to entry, which is both good and bad for Okta. On the one hand, unseating incumbents will not be easy. On the other hand, Okta is both scaling and growing rapidly. Revenues are growing almost 50% per annum. And with its convergence agenda and Auth0, it can build a nice moat to its business and keep others out. Okay, that's it for now. Remember, these episodes are all available as podcasts wherever you listen. Just search Breaking Analysis Podcast and please subscribe. Thanks to my colleague, Eric Bradley and our friends over at ETR. Check out ETR's website at etr.plus for all the data and all the survey action. We also publish a full report every week on wikibon.com and siliconangle.com. So make sure you check that out and browse the Breaking Analysis collection. There are nearly a hundred of these episodes on a variety of topics, all available free of charge. Get in touch with me. You can email me david.vellante at siliconangle.com or at dvellante on Twitter, comment on our LinkedIn posts. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE Insights powered by ETR. Have a great week, everybody. Stay safe, be well, and we'll see you next time.